Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady. I'm Abby the Gardener, and today we're checking in with a post-hurricane garden tour. So, get ready to see all the destruction that occurred as a result of the wind and rain from Hurricane Ian. Yep. We have a lot of stuff to tear out, endless opportunities for replanting. So Abby's here demonstrating what happens to castor beans when they get flopped around in north wind. Um, they just lodge. This is relatively normal. You can see it's not worth us trying to stake it at this stage. So we're going to take this opportunity to tomorrow. This will be the first bed, Abby, that we tackle. We're going to clean it out. Um, unfortunately, the sesame isn't really ripe. Some of it is. So we will come through and actually just harvest all the sesame out of here. We will put it in wheelbarrows and let it dry. So you can see what I'm looking for with sesame is that the pods are dry and brown and you can actually see the seeds right in there. But you see only the ones at the very base are ripe. So you go up the stalk, these are green and they're not ripe yet. Um, but we're, well, sometimes you have to sacrifice seed crops and this is one of those scenarios. So we'll basically just take these stalks and cut them down and we're gonna clean up this garden and get it replanted with cool season vegetables. Just pretty cool. Let's show them what we've got. So I was at a garden center on Friday, no, Saturday, and I scored a whole bunch of cool season veggies that were 50% off. So even though they don't look like 100% now, once they get planted in the ground, they'll bounce right back. And this sort of compensates for the seed crop that I didn't take care of and the cabbage worms ate all of. So we're gonna use all of these to kind of fill in gaps in both this front border and also at the pool. So wait till you see at the pool, all those plants actually lodged and they, they like their roots are out of the ground. So we're just gonna tear all that out and, and get it replanted. One thing that was not impacted by the hurricane was the seminal pumpkin patch, which is looking awesome and starting to get some pumpkins. Um, for those of you who are growing this that I shared seed with at the spring open garden, this is kind of a really, they even let it get bigger than this, but if you harvest them while they're tender and green, you could actually just treat them like a zucchini, which is primarily what I'm going to do with these this year. Instead of letting them become full on pumpkins, I find the zucchini stage of this fruit is a little more practical for my eating habits. So I'm pleased to see that we're finally starting to get some fruit. Remember this was done, this was direct seeded like the last half of June. And that is, that is on purpose so that um, I'm getting pumpkins at the time of year when you actually want pumpkins. Um, could probably have started these a few weeks earlier and we'd have more fruit. So good lesson to know for next year. So Cubby might be the only one that's enjoying the complete and utter weather change that actually did occur on the autumnal equinox. Like we went from being really hot and humid to being really cold and Cubby seems to enjoy it. You could just see, you know, there's just, it's, I would not ordinarily be ripping everything out if we hadn't had a hurricane. I like to wait until frost. This year, because of the storm, we're gonna do some necessary garden management earlier. I just wanted to show you guys here, we've got some Lycoris that are popping up. This is often called the hurricane lily or naked lily because they do tend to bloom after we get heavy rainstorms from tropical systems. And I just really like the color combination with this queenie lime red zinnia. Now, the Queenie Lime Orange, which I will show you and I featured in last week's videos, has really clean foliage. You can see the Queenie Lime Red doesn't, but I think that's actually more because of timing. These got planted by direct seeding in the middle of June, 
Whereas those ones in the backyard, the Queenie Lime Orange, didn't get seeded until the middle of July. And there's a big difference in a plant's performance and its disease susceptibility in that four week period. So again, this is to demonstrate why I'm encouraging people to plant later, really rethink um, your summer planting time, particularly for those of us living in warmer climates where we have a really long frost-free season, like here in central North Carolina zone seven. So Abby is modeling for us the Lespedeza leucuiensis little volcano. And it's just starting to bloom. It's a great legume. Isn't that, the flowers are so pretty. Uh, really low maintenance. Um, often this doesn't even die to the ground and it, it just gets bigger and bigger. But you can cut it back and that'll kind of maintain its size. Um, you know, the, now is its time to shine. It kind of doesn't look like anything the rest of the year, but it really is a terrific fall blooming kind of, depending on where you live, a perennial or um, a woody kind of shrub plant. And next to it, this is actually the first time I've ever noticed seed set on my viburnum canoe. Um, this is a really great evergreen viburnum and you know, I think the seeds on here are really quite pretty. They should persist well through into the winter. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think birds eat it. So that's a great additional quality. Of course, this being a nice kind of shrubby viburnum, it often does get birds nesting in it through the winter season because it's great protection. So as we walk along the outside of the north side of the house, Everything over here seems a-okay, except for the fact that the screen blew through. So, you know, we strategically had these screens when we first built the garden to kind of just give us privacy from the neighbors and where they park and um, that, that got destroyed. There's a bunch of glass. This is why we have to wear gloves in the garden. Look, there's a big piece of broken mirror down here and <laughs> big empty screen. Um, I guess this would be the opportunity to do something a bit more interesting with these plants. And, you know, it was funny because the wind actually came from the Northwest. So none of the plants are really prepared for Northwest wind because that's not really, we usually get winds from the south, Southeast or Southwest through the summer. So the plants really kind of bent over backwards, literally, as you can see here at the feed tank, <laughs> where they literally are just like, they're uprooted. Wow. I mean, look, the, uh, uh, bas the basil is like in the pool. Yeah. Um, so this is actually where we're gonna start tomorrow on garden cleanup. We're just gonna rip this all out. We'll save a bunch of basil. I already have a ton of basil saved for the season but we'll we won't waste what we have but we'll get this feed tank completely replanted with those cool season veggies i think we'll do it like a quilt pattern yeah. and that'll be kind of nice and you know we still have a lot of of uh stuff to to harvest lots of peppers lots of peppers and eggplants and so right before I left for Long Island, I did a seed germination trial and look at what is growing. Oh. The grains are growing, hot diggity. So I've been getting a lot of questions about what to do with the seeds that people bought during fall open garden. And my recommendation is to wait, just wait a little longer. It's a little early. So what we've learned, because we've done this now for what, six years or so, mm -hmm. um, when you get your cool season flowers or grains started too early, they're actually too tender when you really start to get cold weather. And then they actually die to the ground and then they have to grow again and they work too hard. So you're actually better to wait for my advice and I promise you I will make videos when the timing is appropriate. Um, so that you do this so that the plants are, are growing at the right rate for the season 
the realistic season of winter. So I only did these to make sure, first of all, that the seed was viable. That's super important. Mm -hmm. And also because next week I am filming with a crew and we needed to have some examples of what the grains would actually look like growing a few weeks in advance. But don't, don't start your grains yet. It's too early. It's just, it's too early. We're only the beginning of October. Really, we have at least really six or seven weeks before you need to get those cool season things done. Like we especially know this with poppies. Yeah. When you sow the poppies too early, they really don't perform to their fullest capacity in the spring. So we will be giving you appropriate directions, I promise. So you might be wondering how much rain we got from Hurricane Ian, and it looks like just under four inches. And yes, there's a very full wheelbarrow. You know, we were pretty dry coming into fall, but that this has certainly helped pull us out of drought status. And of course we've had cold, windy, gray weather since the hurricane. Yeah. So, I haven't been motivated. <laughs> That's like the exact scenario to make me not want to leave the house. So just like um, all the other beds, you can see like the, the north side of the plants are what's damaged from the wind. These um, castor beans are going to be fine. We'll just cut off some of the broken branches or broken leaves. Uh, you can see the sorghum, you know, everything just got whipped back and including the um, okra, which I really need to come out and harvest. Actually, we have to harvest this today because okay. um, we have lots and lots of okra to harvest. But you can see how it's all just kind of pushed to one side. Okra is going to be the only plant that we put energy into making sure it doesn't come out yet. We're going to try and get these reset so that we can maximize their growth for the next, you know, month and a half. But I mean, overall, the garden looks beat up, but there's no major damage. Um, I've gotten rid of all the weak wooded trees like the stupid Bradford pears. Many of my neighbors hadn't, and they have fallen as a result of this tropical system. So it was nice that we didn't have any major tree damage here. And just so y'all know, like, um, I was in Long Island all of last week <laughs> and my flight home got canceled. So I was with one of my good nursery friends. Uh, we were at the same conference. We ended up flying to Baltimore from Long Island and then we rented a car and then we drove the rest of the day into the hurricane so that we could get home. And then of course we had no electricity. <laughs> So it was kind of like, why didn't I just stay in Long Island? What yeah. was I thinking? You know, <laughs> come back to all the, all the, the Southern drama of, of weather, you know, but I'm so grateful. We had the open garden the week yeah. before when everything looked good. We had fabulous weather um, because yeah, I mean, the garden definitely, um, the gardens never look the same after a tropical system blows through. And this was for us really not so bad. I mean, certainly my heart goes out to everyone in Florida. And I mean, uh, you know, this was a really dangerous storm. So it's quite frivolous what we're dealing with in the garden. Yeah. Um, but I hope everyone will, will stay safe and tune in this week as Abby and I get really busy kind of doing seasonal transitions. For those of you wondering why Abby isn't in school, it's because she's in year round school and she's tracked out right now. So I'm taking advantage of her. So we're going to be busy gardeners all week long, getting things kind of, you know, put back into whip them back into shape and make it so that we actually have some fall crops to start harvesting. All right, everybody, as you can see, Abby is ready for her very first game cheering. Yep. Go Holly Grove. So we appreciate so much all of you tuning in and we look forward to sharing lots of videos this week as we start to really make our first official fall transitions a few weeks earlier than we would normally do. Yep. Well, thanks so much for watching everybody. Happy gardening.